So, it's a secret to no one that the Oculus Quest line of headsets have been immensely popular. And this popularity has been reflected in the VRChat user base. Every day, more and more people are experiencing VRChat for the first time on the Oculus Quest. I wouldn't be surprised if at this point there are more active Quest users than PC users. And while the experience on Quest is pretty similar to what you would be used to on PC, the Quest version has one glaring problem, and that's avatars. The fact of the matter is, most people can't be bothered to make Quest versions of all their avatars. Quest avatars have to be super optimized in order for the game to run smooth enough, and sadly, that can take quite a bit of effort. However, thankfully, this has gotten way easier with a recent VRChat update. Not only have polygon limits for Quest avatars been increased, but you can also set an avatar as a fallback avatar, which is what Quest users will see if you're wearing a PC-only avatar. However, Quest avatars have to meet certain limits in order to be used as a fallback. So today I'll be showing you how to create a Quest-optimized version of your avatar that can also be set as a fallback. Now, before we start, I should quickly mention I am no Blender Guru, by, like, any means. So, don't take anything I say here as being the best advice. This is just what I've found to work best for creating Quest versions of models. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. To start off, it's highly recommended you install a plugin for Blender called Cat's Blender Plugin. It automates a whole ton of stuff for VRChat avatar creation and is basically a requirement if you're making custom avatars. Download it. Please. For this tutorial, I'll be assuming you already have a PC avatar set up in Unity, and that you already have a basic bit of Blender knowledge, though I will also have screencast keys in the bottom left so you can follow along. Import your avatar model into an empty scene in Blender. In the Cats plugin, select Fix Now. This will automatically fix some things on your model, and will also apply any model textures if they weren't there already. We can start off by removing any unnecessary bones. Since VRChat does not support dynamic bones on Quest, we can safely remove bones on things like skirts and hair. Uh, second off, this means that we get to play with the notion of having this on Quest, because Quest is pretty CPU constrained, but if you're not running something that's CPU heavy, then... Yeah. Yeah. To do so, select your avatar's armature and enter edit mode. Select the bones you want to get rid of, and in the Cats plugin, select Merge Weights to Parents. Do not delete the bones, as this will also delete weight data. Keep in mind that your model must have under 90 bones in order to fall under good performance ranking. Next, we can get on to reducing the polygon count. Quest avatars must have less than 10,000 polygons in order to be used as a fallback, so this is the poly count we'll shoot for. Cats has an automatic decimation feature for reducing poly count, which can also preserve shape keys. You can use this option if you want, however, in my usage it has caused some strange side effects, so for this tutorial I'll be doing things more manually. There are two methods I like to use to reduce polygon count. The first is dissolving edge loops. This is a bit more manual, but usually results in nicer topology and also doesn't delete any shape keys. To dissolve edge loops, first enter edit mode and select all faces on your mesh. Then hit Alt plus J to convert to quads. This will make dissolving edge loops a lot easier. Then we'll separate by materials so we can focus on one part of the model at a time. In the Cats plugin, go to Model Options and select Separate by Materials. I'll first start with the hoodie, so I'll hide everything besides that. Select the mesh and enter edit mode. Use shift, alt, left click to select edge loops. When doing this, try to keep it as even as possible. Once you have your edge loops selected, press X and select dissolve edges. As you can see, even dissolving that small group of edge loops dropped the poly count of this hoodie quite drastically. I'll continue to do this for the rest of the model. The next method I like to use is called decimation. This is a lot more automatic, but results in worse looking topology and loss of shape keys. I'd preferably only use decimation on parts of the model with more complicated shape. To use manual decimation, select a part of your model, again, separate by materials, and click the wrench icon. Then go to add modifier and decimate. Reduce the ratio as far as you want, then hit apply. 
I also like to call this method the nobody's going to be staring at my shoes anyway, so f it method. Use these two methods across your model to reduce your overall polygon count. Just remember to avoid using decimation on parts with shape keys, as the shape keys will be deleted. Once you have your poly count reduced to your liking, you're almost done. The next thing to do is to atlas our textures. Quest avatars can only have one material in order to be ranked good or above. Thankfully, the Cats plugin has a handy texture atlas generator. Select Generate Material List and make sure all materials are selected. Click Save Atlas to and save it somewhere. I'll save it to a folder in my Unity project. Now you're ready to export your quest model. Make sure all meshes are joined and click Export Model in Cats. Next, open up your Unity project. In the VRChat SDK control panel, select Switch Target Build to Android. This may take a few minutes. Once that's done, import your quest model and its atlas. In your model's import settings, go to Rig and set the animation type to Humanoid, then hit Apply. Then, go to Materials and Extract Materials. Once your material is extracted, set its shader to one of the provided VRChat mobile shaders. I'll be using Toonlit. Then, drag your model into the hierarchy. Copy and paste your avatar descriptor from your PC model to your quest model. Make sure everything is properly assigned, including eye bones and visings. Next, copy your avatar's blueprint ID. This can be found on your main model's avatar descriptor, or in the VRChat SDK's content manager. Paste it into the pipeline manager on your quest model and click attach. You should now be ready to upload your quest avatar. Go ahead and click upload in the SDK. If you optimize your model to be good or excellent, there will be an option in the upload screen to set it as a fallback. Check that box and then click upload. And with that, you successfully uploaded a quest version of your avatar. I highly recommend creating a quest fallback for at least one of your avatars. That way, you at least have something that represents you to quest users better than a gray robot or a brush or something. With that all being said though, thank you all so much for watching. If this video helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Anyways, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.